Thank you so much indeed to our young ladies tonight for their beautiful ministry and song. We do appreciate them for coming. Even though they belong to this fellowship, we certainly don't take them for granted. We are so grateful to them for coming along this evening. Now we're going to turn to God's Word now as we bring God's message for this meeting this evening. We're turning to the Old Testament and we're turning to the book of Deuteronomy, please, the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. And we're in Deuteronomy chapter number 7. The Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. And we're turning to chapter number 7. And come with me, please, down to verse number 6. <clears throat> now, Moses is speaking, and of course he's speaking to the children of Israel. That's who he's speaking to here. And in verse number 6, Moses says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he hath sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondmen from the land of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. From the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate them to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing upon the public reading of his own precious truth. The title of God's message that I have placed tonight upon this message is a very solemn question. God wants you to take your time tonight as you consider this question. He wants you to think about it. Because it's a very solemn question. And he wants you tonight to ask yourself this question. This is a question God wants you to ask yourself tonight. The question God wants you to ask tonight is this, and the question God wants you to consider tonight, and the question God wants you to give the earnest heed tonight is this. How do I see God? Wonder tonight, dear, have you ever asked yourself that question? How do I See God. Now that's a question you want to take your time over this evening and think about. How do I see God? How do I view God? I wonder tonight, dear friend, in this meeting, I wonder what your first answer would be to that question. How, how do I see God? Well, maybe perhaps somebody would say, well, I see God as something to believe in. I wonder how you would answer that question. Like, God, how do I see God? I see God as something to believe in because people need to believe in something. 
That's how a lot of people see God tonight. They just see God as something to believe in. Understand how you see God tonight. Just as, as something. Something to believe in. Or I wonder tonight, do you see God as someone to believe in? What do I mean? What's the difference, George? You know God tonight is real. You know tonight that God exists. You know tonight that God is almighty. You know, friends, God is not a something. God is a someone. Wonder that how you see God tonight? As someone. The Bible says on two occasions, Psalm 14, verse 1, Psalm 53, and verse 1, the Bible says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Listen, friends, only a fool says there's no God. Only a fool says that God doesn't exist. The world will tell you you're only a fool if you believe in God. I'll tell you, friend, the Bible tells me you're a fool if you don't believe in God. We're in the 17th century. Two men in a, in a dungeon in London. One was an elderly man, the other one was a young man. Shackled by the feet. Held captive in this dungeon, awaiting execution the next morning. The evening before their execution, they were able to shackle their way over to the wee window and the bars and look through the bars and they could see the gallows being built that they were going to be executed on. They're both of them were going to be beheaded the next morning. As both of them looked out, through the bars and saw the yellows been built. They noticed a man with an axe away in the corner of the courtyard splitting blocks. And the young man says, the older one of the two, the older man says, tell me this, what's he over there doing? What's he do? Oh, he's, he's the executioner. Well, what's he over there splitting blocks for? Oh, he's over there practicing his swing. He wants to make sure he gets the job done right first time. Can you imagine the horror of seeing the gallows being built? Can you all, can you, can you feel the horror, friend, of to see the man who's going to end your life practicing his swing by splitting blocks. And every time you hear the block splitting, you thought of your own neck, friends. The young man now, the young man, he was overcome. He fell to his knees. He says, I can't face him. I can't face it. The older man of the two got down beside him. Son, he says, son, he's the least of my worries. What do you mean, he says? What do I mean? See that man over there who's going to end your life? He's the least of my worries. What do you mean he's the least of your worries? He says, he is the least of my worries. It's not him I'm afraid of. You know what the man said? This man in the 1700s, he says this, he referred to the Bible as the good book. He says, the good book says, fear not them that can kill the body but cannot destroy the soul. Fear him that can destroy both body and soul in hell. I'll tell you, the old man in that dark dungeon that day evening, he knew, friend, who he was going to face.
How do you see God tonight, love? Because one day you're going to stand before God tonight, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. You will stand before God. Yes, sir, unsaved man, unsaved woman tonight, you're going to stand before God as sure as I'm standing before you now. You're going to stand before God. God wants you to get this question right tonight. How do I really see God? There's too many people tonight make little of God. We had a wee man who lived in Achnachloy, you called him David. He was a man growing up who was against drink. At the middle age years, he took into the drink, and there was nights he took out much drink. He was, he was asleep for a fortnight. Remember him telling me one time that one night he got drunk and he went to bed and he woke up in a fortnight time and he thought he was blind because he had more pairs of glasses. He couldn't put the right pairs of glasses on him. He thought he went blind. He says, I must have tried six pair of glasses before I got my own glasses. And then he went off the drink. When he reached a certain age, he says, I'm going to quit the drink. And remember, it was my father that asked him, Davy, I hear you're off the drink now. Oh, he says, I am indeed, Roy, I am indeed. He says, it won't belong. It won't belong, he says, till I meet the man up the town. They need to meet him half decent. You know, that breaks my heart to even say that, but I had to say that tonight to tell you, friends, how people make little of God even at the end of life. Never you let, let me little God tonight like that. Be not deceived tonight, Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows tonight, that shall he also reap. Now listen, here's the question tonight. How do I see God? In our Bible reading tonight, we're going to see God as who He really is. What He is really like. And the first sight of God we are going to see tonight is the faithful sight. The sight that people love to see. The sight that people like to see. The sight that people want to see. The faithful sight. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 9. Listen to what it says. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is good. The faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Now, what does God want you to see in that verse tonight? I'll tell you what God wants you to see. God wants you to see to his faithfulness towards sinners. Unsaved friend type. God wants you to see through His faithfulness towards you. He's a faithful God towards sinners tonight. He's the God that loves sinners. He's the God tonight whose heart is for sinners. Do you know what the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 23? Listen to what it says. He says, as, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Now, what's God saying? He hath no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I'll tell you what God's saying. God takes no delight in the, in the sinners that perish. That's what it means. You may say to me, but sure, I'm not a wicked person. Oh, you mightn't be a wicked person as to how you see it. But every unsaved person tonight, no matter how religious, no matter how good, you're wicked in the eyes of God. 
That's how God sees you tonight, dear unsaved friend. God sees you tonight as a wicked person. Every unsaved person, every unconverted person, every unrepented person tonight is wicked in the eyes of a holy God. But he doesn't want you to perish. Because he loves you tonight. What you need to discover tonight, there's nobody on planet earth loves you more than what God loves you in heaven. He's the faithful God tonight in his love, the see. It talks about here in this chapter tonight, in this verse, he keepeth his covenant with them that love him. Who are those that love him? I'll tell you who are those who love him those who have discovered that he has loved them first. God didn't love George McConnell because George McConnell loved him. You know why George McConnell loves God? Because I learned that God loved me first. No person has ever loved God first. Every person that's saved in this meeting tonight has to say, we love him because he first loved us. Those who love God tonight, those who love Christ tonight, are those who have been awakened to His love and to His mercy and to His grace. Think of Saul of Tarsus tonight. Think of the dying thief tonight. Think of the Philippian jailer tonight. Every person that's truly saved discovered a remarkable truth. God loves them. I trust us what you'll discover tonight. God loves you. In the old city of Dusseldorf, there was an artist called Stenberg. He was a great artist. Man, he could paint every feature as if you were looking at the real thing. One day he went across a forest to, just to clear his head, and he met a young, beautiful girl out gathering blueberries in a basket. She was a lovely-looking girl. He said to her, dear, would you mind coming back to my studio? I would love to paint a, paint a portrait of you. And she agreed. She went to his studio, went into his studio and seen this picture that grasped her attention. It was a picture that Stenborn painted. It was a painting of, of the cross. He applied every detail into that picture. You could feel the anguish of Christ as he hung upon the cross. You could almost feel the hatred of those people that was gathered around the cross as they scorned him and mocked him. He was so real in the detail. And this young lassie was looking at the painting. What's this painting? Oh, said Stenberg, that's just a, a picture that I'd done one time of a particular story in the Bible. Oh, says he, could you tell me anything about the story? Who's that man on the cross? She knew nothing about it. Who is that man on the cross? Well, the Bible tells us that's God's son. What was his name? The Lord Jesus. Isn't God not all powerful, she said? Oh, yes, he's all powerful. Well, then why did God allow that to happen to his son? Everything was right down to the detail. Stenberg, who wasn't a believer, who had no time for God, was able to tell her that God loved the world that he put his son to the cross. He allowed that to happen. Mr. Stenberg asked the wee lassie, do you know what I see in that painting for the very first time I never saw? I see in that painting the love of God for me. For the first time, that wee girl, and that painting, that was so perfectly painted, saw the love of God as Christ hung on the cross. Wonder tonight, do you see the love of God?
Christ hung on the cross. Can you see tonight his matchless mercy? Unsaved friend, it was all for you. Let me say something else tonight. Every day you have. Every moment that you have. Every breath you have comes from the hand of God's mercy. The very fact you're alive tonight proves you're a living proof tonight to yourself to the mercy of God. You see, God is not willing tonight that any should perish. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are tonight. God's not willing that you should perish. But that you should come to the place of repentance. Trust His lovely Son. That little girl saw the pain. She saw the love of God. You look to the cross tonight, can you see the love of God? The faithful God. Now God wants you to see the other side of him. And this is not the faithful side now, this is the fearful side. There's a fearful side to God, love. There's a fearful side to God. Look at verse 10. And he repaith them that hate him to their face. To destroy them, he will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. You see, this is the sight of God people don't like to see. But this is the sight people need to see tonight. It's the fearful sight. You see, friend, he's a God of love tonight. Ah, but he is a God of judgment. You know what frightens me? What frightens me is tonight how many people sit in gospel meetings for years. Told all these things. But do nothing. What I don't want to tell you tonight is this, but I need to tell you. God's going to judge you for it. And God's going to repay you to your face every time you reject his son. And it's better to know it now and do something about it. Lost forever. Yes. And repay them that hate them to their face. Any person that turns their back on what God has done for them with the cross hates God. That's how God sees it. Oh, you may go to church for years and belong to the church. But if you never repent of your sin and turn your back on Christ and turn your back on all that God has done for you through the Son, you might as well hit God to his face and God will judge you for it. For every time you do that, you're tramping under your two feet the blood of Christ. Don't ever think God will let sinners off. Don't you think God will let you off, love? Don't you think God will let you off, sir? And perhaps for somebody in this meeting tonight, God's patience is wearing thin. 
What does God say to me? Because I have called, ye have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. Because you have said it, not all my counselor would have none of my reproof. I will laugh at your calamity. Do you ever think about the laughter of God? And I will mock when your fear cometh. He being often reproved and hardeneth his neck shall be suddenly destroyed, and that without remedy. That's why the Bible says tonight, we have all to do one thing. Amos 4, verse 12, prepare to meet thy God you will meet. And there's only one way you can meet God. Through the person. Through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. And God's given you a chance today. That's by in a word of prayer. Father God, tonight we have heard thy voice O oh God, tonight we have seen Thee afresh from Thine own Word. We well, thank Thee, Lord, that Thou art merciful. We well, thank You, Lord, tonight Your long-suffering. We well, thank You, Lord, tonight indeed for Your great love. But, Lord, we've saw the other side tonight. We we'll see the fearful side. And not only do we see, Lord, Thee as the loving God, we see Thee as the vengeful, the avenging God. Lord, not only have we saw tonight the mercy of God, we have saw the judgment of God. But we thank you tonight we have saw one who died on an old rugged cross for us tonight. Tonight, dear friend, I trust you're like the wee last in the sea. That you'll see the love of God at the cross. And you'll take Christ to your heart tonight. Make him yours. So that the judgment of God that fell upon him will never fall upon you. He can set you free tonight from the dark dungeon of sin. Tonight you wait execution. But Christ can set you free. Would you not want to be set free tonight from this judgment? Set free tonight from the penalty of sin. Set free tonight from the very punishment of sin. You can be tonight and know you're free by coming to the Lord Jesus who can set you free. And Lord, as we separate one from the other just now, we pray, O oh God, that as my voice falls silent, that the voice of God, the Holy Spirit, will keep striving on. Save. That's our prayer tonight, Lord, just save. Save so. And Lord, tonight, may someone Flee from the wrath of God that is coming. Impart us now in thy fear and with thy blessing. Take us now to our homes in safety. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Someone